Hello all, in this video we want to talk about degrees of freedom taken by different types of datums in GDMT. Uh, so, as you know, we can use different types of uh, datum features in GDNT, and here is a table that is taken from my uh, reference, and you can see that we have basically surfaces, right, wet, uh, cylindrical surface, spherical, conical, and so on, so I want to Take a look at them and tell you how many degrees of freedom each one is taking from rotation and translation. And then we look at the practical example. So if uh, your datum is uh, referring to a, a simple surface, no dimension, just a surface, right? Then it means that uh, your uh, theoretical datum is a plane. And as long as you are limited on a plane, you can only move in two direction on that plane right and you can rotate about the axis perpendicular to the plane so you're gonna lose one degree of freedom that is perpendicular to the plane and you're gonna lose two rotation right about this axis and about that axis you're gonna lose it so you're gonna lose two rotations and a translation if it's a width and you're talking about the center plane of it, that's the same thing because again, here it's a plane and a plan or constraint means one translation and two rotations gone. Then we talk about a cylinder. If you have a cylindrical hole, whether solid or hollow, you're talking about an axis. And if you're limited to be on an axis, then you lose two rotations and two translations, right? As you can see here, because the only thing you can do is to move along this axis, right? In this direction and to rotate about the axis. Okay, so a cylindrical constraint or to be an axis means you lose two rotation and two translation and just be left with one rotation, one translation. If on the other hand, you are limited to stay on a spherical surface, right like a ball and socket joint for example in real life then you cannot move off of this surface so you lose all translations but you can still have all of the rotations okay all of the rotations are available to you and therefore you lose only three translations and of course the datum corresponding to a spherical surface is a single point if a surface that is being constrained is the conical surface because it has the slope when you fix this basically it can also provide a resistive force along the axis okay so if this is limited right if this guy is limited in something else like another surface like this right then because of the wedge action you cannot also move in uh, along this axis okay you're limited you cannot move along it so you're going to use that extra translation that you had uh, up there for the axis only so you're going to lose all three translations and of course as long as you are on the axis of this you're going to lose the two rotations as well so the only degree of freedom you have is a single watt, a single um, rotation. So here your datum or datums uh, correspond to an axis and a planar uh, constraint together because the axis, if you know, it takes away the four degrees of freedom and this plane, that's right, it takes three degrees of freedom, but two out of those three degrees of freedom are these two translations which are already taken by the axis so this is not going to take those uh, again away two, uh, twice right if they are already taken the only thing this one will take away is basically this motion here because as long as you are on that plane you cannot move along that axis so an axis and a plane corresponds to uh, a um, conical surface on the other hand, if it's a linear extrusion and you fix this linear extrusion into something, it's the opposite here. In this case, because this surface here that I'm painting 
has no slope along this direction there is no wedge action and there is no force to resist that motion so you still have that translation degree of freedom off but because the surface is not in general a cylindrical surface it's not axis symmetric you cannot rotate about it okay if it was like this completely axis symmetric you could do rotation about the axis but here the surface is not what it's not axis symmetric and therefore there is no chance of rotation so it takes three rotations away and two translation and this corresponds to two orthogonal planes because in two orthogonal planes as you know all three translations are gone and of course each one will take away two rotations right but uh, the thing is uh, those two rotations that this one take and the two rotations that this one take one of them is shared so totally they take only away three rotations and two translations so it corresponds to two orthogonal planes and finally if it's like a uh, extrusion with a uh, draft angle right so it's a complex surface like this so it's not axisymmetric, so it does not allow for rotation, and it has the slope, so it has the wedge action. So in this case, you take away everything, and so this corresponds to three planes together. So if you limit that surface alone, that means the object cannot move, okay? So wanted to emphasize those. Now let's practice that in uh, this part here on the right, which again comes from my... Um, uh, reference so here you have a part okay and if you look at this part here we put three axes on it X Y Z so they have three translations and about these axes uh, we have three rotations U V and what U V and W therefore uh, we have six total degrees of freedom and here the goal is to see with each one of these datums a b c all the way to j uh each one takes away which one of these degrees of freedom and the datum corresponding to that feature is what so if you start with a you can see that a is what a here is referring to the surface right it is referring to this surface and there is no dimension associated with A, so it's just a surface or a plane, right? So you can see uh, it's item number three or plane. And as long as uh, it's this back plane here, which in this case, this back plane, if you fix that, then you lose motion along X and you lose rotations for V and W, which you can see over here and over there. Okay, what about B? So B here, you see, is attached to a dimension. When it's attached to a dimension, it's a feature of size. Therefore, since it's a width, it's going to be this mid plane. And again, it's a plane, of course, but the center plane, right? And uh, it's very similar to A, just in the middle of the object. So it takes away the same degrees of freedom as A did, okay? Then we have C and E together. So here, C and E together. Why together? Because C is this cylindrical surface and E is this other cylindrical surface. And they both share the same axis. And in this case, it means both of them will be assembled on a mating part. So we use both of them. And of course, it's corresponding to an axis. So it's item number two. And as long as you are on this z-axis and you fix that, you only can move along the z-axis and you can rotate about the z-axis, w. So these two will be kept. Anything else will be taken away, as you can see there. Then we go to d. Again, d, as you can see, right, is corresponding to a dimension here. So again, it's a basically this mid-plane, right? Let me see if I can draw it a little bit better for you so uh it's uh this mid plane right let me use my mouse and uh, grab it and bring it here hopefully something like that and uh for this mid plane of course uh it's a plane 
it's a center plane and so a center plane is clearly which item that's right that is item number four and that's what you can see here we have for d and uh, in this case uh, this plane is perpendicular to the z axis so that means z is going to be taken away as well as the two other rotations u and v then we have f f here is again a surface as you can see it's just a surface with no dimension which is parallel to the previous one d so the degrees of freedom it takes is similar to previous one but it's just a plane not a center plane okay so this is for d and f then we go to what we go to uh, g now g here again you see it's this bottom surface no dimension so again it's a surface and in this case is perpendicular to the y-axis so it takes away y as well as the rotation about two other axes u and w then we go to h and j starting with h if you can see h h is attached to a dimension and in this case it's these holes and both of them so in this case we have to fix both of the holes so it's like we have some pins right and then we kind of assemble the part onto these pins, right? So we fix the part onto these two pins in blue. And we know if we do that, then the part cannot do any motion other than just moving along the X direction. So Y and Z will be taken as well as U, V, and W all rotations. And of course, uh, in this case, you have two holes so they take five degrees of freedom away and the solution is for the axis is very similar to what very similar to uh, our linear extrusion if you look at the linear extrusion you can see it has two planes right it has two planes and it takes away three rotations and two translations now here we say two planes and an axis so you might say where does the axis come from well the axis is the common axis that is the intersection of the two planes that's this axis here right so uh, what are the two planes and the axis in this case well one of them is this plane the symmetry plane between the two holes the other one is what this plane here and the axis in this case is perpendicular to the plane inward which is parallel to the x-axis so two holes are also taking five degrees of freedom away and finally if we talk about j j in this case if you look at it is this conical surface is this one and you know a cone will take away what three translations and two rotations the only thing you can do is the rotation about the axis of the cone which is z rotation which is called w so w is not taken away everything else is and clearly a cone corresponds to an axis and a plane here okay so hopefully this practice was useful to you and you learned how many degrees of freedom each one of the uh, datum features are taken away and what is the corresponding uh, datum for them so when you want to establish them and establish a datum reference frame in gdnt you know which one of these to use or which combination of them okay thank you for your attention i'll see you in the next lecture